Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Finishing up a work day. Well, not quite. I still got to go to the uh, post office. Today was a big day uh, for me because uh, I was able to get out. Um, I did a second Iron Sights campaign that was for charity, and it was limited to 150 backers. 122 of them were domestic backers. So I got. Um, uh, I'm mailing the book first. There's also like a, a high quality uh, print and a T-shirt that'll come later, but. The signed book, autographed book to the the premium perk package, all of the um, domestic uh, backers, and then also, oh, this is a big one, mail into Canada. My first people, my first international backers, um, testing uh, things out there. Uh, Tomorrow is going to be uh, UK and the uh, it's only I don't know like fifteen left. Um, so I'll hit up the rest of them and then the. Uh, People with the posters um, <coughs> will start getting uh, theirs. Posters come in on uh, Wednesday. So, uh, and then two of my stragglers gave me their addresses. <laughs> and one guy wrote back to me and just started chit-chatting, but uh, then didn't give me his address, so I asked for it again. Plus, I came up with a story idea uh, with my buddy, so I'm going to, after I review this, m talk about it in the video, and then you can tell me if that's already been done. You can say Simpsons did it. Anyway, this is Hit Girl, uh, issue nine, Rome one of four. So it's a it's a series. I thought it was gonna be a bunch of mini series. It's basically a series, and every uh, a couple issues, it'll switch to a different locale. And it looks like they're doing something pretty slick that they will find someone from the country. So when in Rome, uh, right as Romans do, get a get an Italian. Uh, this is good for two reasons. Number one. It, uh, you know, obviously you're going to get the local culture and flavor and flair and all that stuff much better. Number two, in these very uh, <laughs> politically correct times, uh, it kind of insulates you from, oh my God, do you hear what Mark Millar said about Italians? Um, nope, it wasn't Mark Millar, it was another Italian, so <laughs> take that cultural appropriation. Um, uh, Mark Millar, I I've talked about it before, I've... I've ebbed and flow from liking him to really hating him <laughs> to to loving his stuff to kind of like a mild appraisal of it right now but man he is savvy it, he sees how the wind is changing and then he you know he changes back you know when ultra violence and really like smutty humor was cool he was number one on that when it was like the days of like internet rumors and oh did you hear uh, no, nah, who's the guy? The guy who played Jesus in Passion of the Christ. He's going to be the next Superman. I'll bet my whole career on it. Like, he was doing that. Now when it's kind of like, say it, like, let's just play things really safe because everyone's scared of everything and anything can destroy your career at any moment. He's just like, remember the thing I did? It, it, and here it is again. And it, it, it's, uh, yeah. If you, if you like it, it's me. If you don't like it... It's him. <laughs> so anyway, uh, this one is, uh, you gotta say, it had multiple covers. I picked this one just because I thought it looked cooler than the others. I gotta say, though, I'm looking at uh, the cover for um, Iron Sights, and uh, I would seriously put that cover against anything else at the, uh, that are, that's on the stands right now. But anyway, this is uh, in Rome, and it starts off with a pretty cool little uh, fight. Uh, one of the things that I was into right away is stuff like that. The, the person who is being, like I say, whoever's on the title has to be awesome. I mean, honestly, she had a pretty cool, awesome entrance, but then she got, you know, a little good knee strike to the thorax. <laughs> um, is that, uh, look, she got knocked out and... Woke up in freaking cargo. This is a classic of heroic fiction. The hero, or let's say protagonist, uh, has to be in jeopardy, be behind the eight ball, lose, uh, be scared, uh, get tricked, all those things. So that makes it so much more exciting when she wins at the end. We saw with the, left, the last one but by Jeff Lemire, um, Nazi hunter, uh, was it was just basically her easily winning everything. So the end is just like 
If you're easily winning, it's, I don't know, what, what, what would the analogy be like? It's like cutting a magnet. <laughs> Supposedly when you cut a magnet, like, they always have the negative. It doesn't matter the length. Like, you, you can just go here, or you can cut it here, and it's still a magnet. You can cut it here, it's still a magnet. That might not be the best analogy. Um, but this one was cool. I mean, when she, when she got knocked out and she woke up in cargo, you were like, what? Really? Damn. This... This one must be pretty slick if she can get the drop on Hit Girl, who's, you know, they've shown in movies and comic can fight like 15 people at once. So you're like, all right, cool. And, in the, and it's uh, Raphael Albuquerque. Uh, he's a lot of fun. Um, and then it's just kind of, it's, it's real simple. It's a chase. Both of them are pretty good, but both of them aren't perfect. So uh, this, this is the one where I realized how savvy uh, uh, Mark Millar is. I know his name's Mark Miller, but I just I've been I've been saying in my head for twenty years Mark Millar, so it's Mark Millar. She goes, uh, she drives like a maniac, definitely Italian. Oh my God, I can't believe that. Oh, it's it, it's an Italian who said it about Italians. Well, that's fine. Um, uh, then they introduce this really uh interesting villain called Donna Gist Gistina, and she's I don't I don't here's the deal. I don't even know her deal. I don't know if she's just a crazy person who does random things. She appears to be some sort of uh, criminal leader, but it also <laughs> looks like she just might be a crazy person that just causes trouble all the time. Anyway, it was interesting. Uh, I liked it. Um, uh, really, really good art. And uh, that's about it. It. I don't, wouldn't say it ends on a spoiler or a cliffhanger, but um, it was definitely interesting. It's interesting enough that I will come back and read number two probably won't do a video on it because again it's uh these <laughs> these miller world ones most of them are tv and movie bait this one was entertaining it was fun but um it might be a little bit too pace for the trade for the average person but anyway here's the, then we get to see some oh yeah the kick ass is i know i'm going to i am i don't i don't care but uh, anyway, I've, I've heard really good things about the Magic Order. Prodigy looks interesting. I don't really know what it is. I kind of think it's going to be like the criminal version of Kingsman. I mean, not in the same universe, but uh, I'll be back for that one. It's a really good cover, by the way. Um, all right, J Jupiter's Legacy, my boy. So this is, this is when I'm making a call out to all you people out there who have read like everything Mark Millar did. Because usually when you have an idea, you go... Oh, I wonder if anyone's done that before. But when me and my buddy got this idea yesterday, it was, oh, I wonder if Mark Millar's done that before because it's a really Mark Millar style uh, deal. So I had this story called Flashbang and uh, we ended up starting it and I ended up canceling it. And I ended up canceling it because various reasons, but it was because like I didn't love the story. That was the main thing. I liked the story. I liked the characters, but I didn't love it. And, a lot, and I didn't have an ending for it. Um, and it was kind of open-ended. It was more of a series than, you know, I, I kind of like, I, this is the model I'm going for, Mark Millar, you know, like finite series, um, uh, different kind of, you know, similar tomes, but you can, you can, by the way, they totally need to rebrand Chrononauts as Time Bros. That is the absolute 100% correct title for this uh, Sean Gordon Murphy book. Okay, so anyway, this is my story. So I, last year I used to come up with like a new story idea every month or so, and then I just ran out. Finally got a new story idea. So my buddy and I were talking about how uh, uh, there are countries, usually really high crime countries, where they have vigilantes for real. You know, superheroes are vigilantes. Like it happens in Mexico, some little village, everyone will just get sick and everyone will go buy some surplus M1 <laughs> rifles or whatever. And some cartel guys will run into town and they'll just slaughter them all and like hang them from like the statue of, of uh, I don't know, probably not Christopher Columbus. I'm blanking on the guy. <laughs> uh, and uh, and he was talking about one in Russia, where they they found some Russian mafia and they basically just like burned the house they ran down. So I started uh, joking about. I started like doing like a voice, like a Russian voice, and the idea was that a Russian guy was here on the border. And he basically found a bunch of cartel guys, shot half of them, locked them in their your, their uh, house or whatever, mansion, and then he burned the place down. Now, while he was trying to escape, 
he gets captured by the police. He's being uh, interrogated. And uh, they, they're like, why'd you do it? Why'd you kill all these people? Why'd you burn them? And he's just being a smart ass. So he goes, I'm superhero. And then they go, oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Why didn't you tell us? And then they, they take his cuffs off and they, they let him go. <laughs> well, some other stuff. And he's like, he doesn't understand what's happening. He was sent from Russia to basically, he's, he's a hitman, so he's supposed to kill all these people. So what he finds out is, and this is elements that I'd used in Flashbang, that there was these grandfathered in laws. Grandfathered means it's illegal to do it now, but if you belong to this situation, ipso facto, you know, uh, you still get to do it. Um, and so there was this grandfathered law, law on the border, and it had to do with, you know, Texas, you know, becoming part of America, that basically they got this grandfathered law that goes back to the 1800s and it's still current, that you're allowed to be, back in the day it was called like a campion or it was like a champion. So they were like Lone Ranger types or uh, Zorro types. Um, but every town was allowed to have like one campion, one, uh, you know, champion. So in the 1800s, it was a Lone Ranger type, uh, you know, uh, then it became kind of like a luchador type. And now it's in the modern days, it's more of like a superhero. Um, and their one uh, superhero had literally just died like the previous day. This Russian guy did not know this at all. So uh, then they basically say, OK, we're going to let you go. But, um, you know, we're going to reiterate all the rules. And these rules go back to like 18 whatever um it's like uh you got to wear a mask when you do it and he was wearing a mask when he <laughs> killed all the people and burned them down he goes uh you got to um uh you know uh we got to deputize you we're going to give you a badge uh you, we have to have your identity on file but it's going to be secret and a couple other rules i'll probably figure out the rules so the deal is he finds out that it's basically in this town because he just lucked into this superhero status and he even just made up a superhero name because they're like, he's like, I'm superhero. They're like, oh, really? What? Oh, oh what's your name? And he just like, it's kind of like uh, Usual Suspects. He just reads two random words off like uh, a, a, what is it? Oh my gosh, a cork board where you, you know, put notices. So he, he, he gives them a superhero and they're like, oh, geez, you're new. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we, we, we forgot to ask. We're just so used to the last guy. He'd been around for so long. Um. So he finds out there's like this uh, uh, cultural expectation. You don't just fight crime. You're also expected to like when they open the new grocery store, you're supposed to show up and like take pictures of people and autographs. You're supposed to go to the, 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 the pool gus and, and, and even like one time, like the last, most of them, and this is a kind of like a border culture thing, you're supposed to like play the guitar and sing and stuff like that. <laughs> so I came up with this scene where he's like at the Polgas and they're like, they're like, they're like, sing, sing. And he just like, he gets up on stage and he just like starts uh, chanting some Russian hunting dirge. It was just like the only song he knows by heart. So anyway, it'd probably be kind of like a corny story about this, you know, hitman who gets basically accepted by this community that he was just going to be passing through and killing a bunch of people and then go on from there. Anyway, Tell me, I seem to remember the 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 mobster's son in Kick-Ass 2. He, he became a supervillain, but all the other aspects of one hero per town and, um, you know, these, like, cultural things of, like, people love you and you're supposed to go on parades and you're supposed to, like, go to school and tell kids to stay in school. Um, I don't think that's been done. So tell me if it's done by Mark Millar, government name Mark Miller, um, or anyone else. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Uh, hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone given to the uh, Patreon and the Indiegogos. You're, you are uh, funding original content that is being mailed internationally now. And I'll have more uh, new comic reviews up later today. Thanks. Bye.